I don't know about yourselves, but I'm a sucker for the 1930s Art Deco style decor. The clean, sweeping lines, the simple, non-fussy design, and the futuristic feel make me feel right at home. Not many people know, but the term Art Deco is used to describe a whole range of designs. The design that we're going to focus on is Streamline Modern and how the first ever streamlined Australian locomotive was inspired by it. But to get a better appreciation of the engine's unusual design, we need to understand what Streamline Modern is and why it was so important. The first signs of this new style was not really a style at all, it was more for function. 1929 saw the USA in the midst of the stock market crash and the Great Depression. Money and jobs were scarce, people had few commodities to their name and could only afford the very basic. Higher up the consumer supply chain, manufacturers could ill afford to add fussy decorations and found that less is more and that people were buying the most budget of products. At the same time, the great speed race was hotting up. Locomotives and ships were striving to be faster and faster to settle public demand and planes, which were not normally used to carry the general public, were being designed to cut through the air, making them faster and more impossible to catch. Aerodynamics became the next big thing and it's this that would influence design. Scientists knew that air moves better over curves thanks to experiments on the aerodynamics and shapes of fluid drops and designed their vehicles to the same shape, which is why some designs look teardrop shaped. But it was the wind tunnel designed in 1934 that the scientists would understand how design could affect performance and air movement. They called this design technique streamlining. As these new designs came about, designers took these streamlining designs to not only vehicles, but to buildings and household appliances. It solved several problems, including bringing cheap, affordable products to a cash-strapped nation. Gone were fussy ornaments and decorations, and in came simplicity, smooth curves and long lines. Ships and engines also adopted streamlining in order to help with their speed, and with the most famous being the A4 class and the LMS Duchess classes. The success of these new classes prompted other countries to get in on the streamlined act as well. In Australia, the completion of the new broad gauge line between Adelaide and Port Pirie would mean that for the South Australian Railway, a new type of locomotive was needed. The locomotive was needing to be fast, strong and be adaptable for both goods and freight. It was a challenge that designer Fred Shear wanted to tackle head on. Fred designed a 140 ton locomotive taking inspiration from the Pacific classes, the class 620. The 620 was very different to the other classes used on the Australian Railway. For starters, its valve gear was not the commonly used while shirt, but the Barker valve design. The gear was known to be better for hard wearing and did not need as much servicing as the others, perfect for the longer journeys and the first engine off the production line in 1936 was streamlined. The boiler was covered in the streamlined casing with a grille at the front. From the front, it didn't look too dissimilar from the front of motor cars at the time, and of course, the iconic go faster stripes that were, to the public, styled for speed. The unveiling, though, was less than impressive, with one reporter describing the new engine as a piece of fluff. Nine other engines would soon follow 620, however the streamlining was removed and they were put to work. As well as working mainline, the engines were adaptable and were just as good on branch line work with minimal fuss. However their dominance on the mainline was not to last. In 1943, less than 10 years after they were built, they were relegated to the Wilgunda, Bridgewater and Tail and Bend railways just for taking passengers. They were further pushed back in favour of the new Bluebird railcar and the class started to see the end of its life. 
The Streamline 620, now named Sir Winston Duggan, was the first to see the cutter's torch in 1961, with the others slowly ending up at the scrapyard throughout the decade. By 1970, only two out of the ten remained. Number 624 is on static display, while 621 had a better fate. 621 was decommissioned in 1969 and was set to join its brothers. However, instead of the scrapyard, 621 was stored away while the Steam Heritage Railway wanting to save the engine saved $10,000 to restore it to running condition. It only took two years for 621 to see service again and it was named as Duke of Edinburgh by the Governor of the South Australia in celebration. 621 returned to service as a heritage engine and ran for nearly 20 years taking passengers and visitors on excursions and rail charters. In 1994, the engine suffered a major blow when it was discovered that its large cast iron header was cracked during a routine inspection. The header was deemed non-repairable, so a new one was needed to be recasted to the tune of $30,000. It was simply too much for the railway to raise, so the engine was left at the storage at the back of the shed until a solution could be found. The solution came from a volunteer to the railway, Mark Batten. Mark had heard of 621's troubles and wanted to help raise the money to get the engine back onto the rails. Rather than asking the public, Mark approached businesses to sponsor the new heater and to his delight, they agreed. After careful planning and intricate designing, the header was made and fitted to and the engine returned to service once more. When you see 621, it's very obvious that it picked up none of its looks from its streamlined brother. It is still, however, a stunning engine to look at and enjoy. Streamline Modern, however, is in plain sight from buildings to cars and appliances and even to the clothing you wear. It's all around us, even to this day. Well, the eve of another year is upon us. What a year it was! I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported me this year. It's been amazing and I can't thank you enough for your love and support. I hope you have all have an amazing and prosperous new year full of fun, love and happiness. And of course, I wish you dry rails and smooth running. We'll see you all next year.